Last time I told you about far field approximation and this is the brief summary. We saw that regardless of what charge configuration I have, as long as I go far away from that charge configuration, the electric field is, z uh, sorry, if the electric field follows the radial rule, kq by r square, making the electric field either radially outwards or inwards, making our life simpler. However, there is one special charge configuration for which this system, this, this approximation horribly fails. I think you can guess that. And that is when sigma q ends up becoming zero. Okay? So if, I'll write that over here, if sigma q becomes zero, then whatever we studied in part one, then analysis of part one of this particular video session fails. And that's where this part comes in. So I will take the simplest case where sigma q is equal to zero. I will take a case of two charges, one being a positive charge, the second one being a negative charge of exactly the same magnitude and I'll prove it to you that this fails horribly. Look over here. So here are the two charges. Say here is charge plus q and here is charge minus q. And imagine they are separated by some distance and instead of calling that distance as A, I am going to call the distance as 2A. You will see why. Let me call that as 2A. If I now ask you what is the electric field anywhere on the axis this side, so imagine a point over here, if we use this far field approximation, imagine I go far away. You can still imagine 2A is about a millimeter and the point P is a kilometer away if you like. Okay? So you go far away, I don't care. But you notice now that the electric field plus Q, so let me draw that over here. So let's say here is that point P. The electric field plus Q is going to be in this direction. This will be electric field plus Q. And the electric field to the minus Q will be in this direction. This will be the electric field due to the minus Q. And what you can notice now is that the electric field due to the minus Q is a little, it's a little bit more than the electric field due to the plus Q because that point P is a little bit closer to minus Q than plus Q. And thus the electric field over here is now in this direction. This now is the net field. But if you use the far field approximation, substitute sigma q plus q minus q, zero. And that's not possible. So the question is, why did it work before and why doesn't it work now? The reason it worked before is because the net field was non-zero. That's why it worked. The way to think about this is imagine the following numbers. Imagine that the accurate value accurate value is let's say 5.02 and let's say you approximate it to 5. The error in this case is very tiny. The error would be 5, the difference over here is 0 0.02 and if you want to calculate the relative error, you divide by the original number, the actual number is 5.02. So that is our relative error. And if you calculate that, it's, it's roughly, uh, let's see, 2, 10 power minus 2, divide by roughly 5, that's 0. 0.4, 10 power minus 2, and that error is 0.4%. That's a very, very tiny uh, error. So we can, we can live with that error, that's not a problem. But now imagine, the accurate value is 0. 0.2, or 0. 0.02, and let's say our approximation gives us the answer as zero. So this was our error. Now what is the error? Now the error is, you take the difference, it's 0 0.02 divided by the actual value, 0 0.02, it's one, and that is 100% error. 
and you can't live with a hundred percent error you can't use a model that gives you 100 percent error this is fine this works okay but this is not fine this is bad that doesn't work the problem with plus q and minus q is that when you use the approximation you get the zero whereas it's not supposed to be zero it's supposed to be a very tiny number when a tiny number gets approximated as zero it's wrong you can't use that approximation we do something very similar with cos and sine see cos of cos of um, zero is one you can do that similarly if i ask you what is cos of 0 0.001 you can approximate it and say it's one sine of zero is zero but if I ask you what is sine of 0 0.001 you can't call it as zero you can't approximate as zero because sine of 0 0.001 is going to be a very tiny number and you cannot approximate that tiny number to zero because the moment you do that you're getting a hundred percent error of course, we have learned, you must have learned that sine theta approximates to be theta in radians when theta is very small. So that's the simple idea. So if your approximation is giving you an answer zero where it's not supposed to be, don't use that approximation. As long as it's giving you a non-zero answer, it's fine. All right. And you can now notice that regardless of where you go, there is not a single point where the electric field is actually zero. Everywhere you go, the electric field turns out to be non-zero. Suppose you go somewhere over here. Again, the approximation tells us it's zero. But if you figure this out, if you carefully analyze this, notice that the electric field over here due to plus Q is in this direction. And the electric field due to the minus Q is this way. If you went exactly on the perpendicular bisector, then these two distances are equal to each other, pretty much like a problem which I did before in two dimensions. And the net field now will be in this direction. Similarly, the net field over here now, at this point, will be in the same direction. You can check that, regardless of how far you go, net field will be in that direction. And therefore, this time, whatever analysis we wrote in the last time fails. First step, first thing we wrote is that the electric field um, depends only on sigma q. It doesn't. It will depend on something else. It probably depends on this internal distance as well. An electric field no longer follows this nice rule. Electric field is no longer radial. You can clearly see this is not a radial field. Okay, so the whole thing is a mess and we need to solve this mess. So let's solve that in part 2.2. So I'll see you in the next video.